Lena Newen here, and I'm an oral medicine specialist in Perth, Western Australia. You may have seen my recent post that I posted in recognition of World Cancer Day on actinic colitis and lip cancer, and I received some queries about this post. This is from a recent dental graduate whose name is Megan. Now, I don't always have time, unfortunately, to answer all the questions that I get, but I do have the morning off today, and I thought these questions were really great, so let's get to it. So her first question is, I have trouble distinguishing between normal dryness and flakiness of the lip, which seems to be very common in elderly patients and potential actinic colitis and the appropriate course of action, as I realize I should avoid alarming patients whilst trying to remain cautious and not miss a pre-malignant condition. So normal dryness and flakiness of the lip um, that's that, that's actually a really good question, but normal dryness and flakiness of the lip is something that you can try to get the patient to use a lip balm or an emollient and check back in them in two weeks and see if it still persists. Um, if they're not sure or if they tell you that that same area has been coming and going for a long time, then that probably should raise some alarm bells in your head. Um, a history of skin cancer as well, if they have it in other areas, is a good indication that they have a lot of previous sun damage. Um, the signs of actinic colitis will include loss of vermilion border, persistent ulceration, crusting. So anything that looks unusual or doesn't heal up, I think I think it should be referred. Um, the question here that you have about the appropriate course of action or whether you should avoid alarming patients, um, I would say that if you do think that it is something that's worth worrying about, um, it's definitely worth telling the patient because I think sometimes as health professionals, obviously we're very caring and we and we want to make sure that our patients aren't anxious or unduly alarmed. But the flip side that I see, unfortunately, being uh, in oral medicine is that patients sometimes don't realize the gravity of the situation. So they leave the dental practice thinking, oh, um, you know, the, the dentist or whoever didn't actually seem that worried about it. So it should be fine. And unfortunately, it can be fairly serious pathology. Um, the other question that I usually get is what do I do if my patient has seen, you know, their, their GP or they've had their skin cancer check, um, but there's still an area here on the lip that I I'm quite worried about. Uh, my best advice there would be to trust your gut because we look at lips all day, every day. If you think something doesn't look right, there is a persistent white patch, mucosal change, color change, texture change, something that's not going away, I'm better safe than sorry. So as I like to say, if in doubt, check it out. Now, the other question is, would it be sufficient to advise such patients on sun protection and encourage them to monitor and get it looked at e.g. by their GP or dermatologist if it appears potentially concerning. I think this depends on where you are. So I, I am obviously biased. I feel that oral medicine specialists are very well trained in this area and we have a high index of suspicion. Um, I do have several patients where they've seen, you know, several doctors or other people in the past and things on their lip uh, were dismissed or, or not being checked out. So it does depend on where you are, but I think it's probably a good idea to check in with the people that you usually refer to um, and check in with them and see what would be appropriate for your particular geographical area. So, for example, um, if you are in you know, Tasmania, you may not have any oral medicine specialists around you, but you may have a very good GP or very good dermatologist who is an interest in this sort of thing. And you can have a chat with them, let them know their concerns. Um, a good practitioner that you are referring to should never dismiss your concerns. So don't feel scared about actually referring if you do feel that there is a potential problem. Um, I understand you mentioned persistent ulceration, crusting or firmness to palpation should be viewed with suspicion. Are these the signs that indicate formal or immediate referral to an oral medicine specialist by dentist? Yes, so I think that anything that doesn't heal up, any mucosal texture change, any ulceration, persistent crusting, flaking, you know, white patches, any of that sort of stuff, um, I think that, that should be referred. Um, as to how urgent it is, you can always have a chat with your local specialist and have a chat with them, get them to look at the photographs and see um, if they, to triage it, because most oral medicine specialists do have a look at referrals to triage them to see how urgent it is. Um, for example, if it's a white patch, then that I think would be less urgent than, say, um, an area of ulceration or something that already, frankly, looks like lip, lip cancer. So we're sort of looking at the um, dysplasia or the precancer stage versus actual cancer. Um, if you think that it is something that has already progressed, then definitely an urgent referral. 
can normal physiological aging also cause loss of definition of the vermilion border with no other obvious signs of sun damage? Uh, yes, it can, but loss of vermilion border would almost always be in relation to generalized mucosal change as related to actinic chemitis. All right, thank you. I hope that helps. All right, take care. Bye.